Hi, I'm Adam, and today I'm going to be trying to make Daigaku Imo. This is a potato-based confection, and so Daigaku is literally college, and Imo is potato. So, college potato. Uh, why? So this is, this is a uh, confection or snack that um, is basically chunks of, of potato, cut up, fried, and covered in a sugar syrup. You know, the, the name has been proposed to have come from simply being the kind of uh, snack that's it, it's something that's easy to make, something that would have been popular with college students. Um, there are a couple of other uh, ideas that I've, I've, or stories that I've, I've read for why it's named this, but I think the simple explanation is uh, reasonable enough. I haven't actually done all that much research in the origin of the name. So I'm, we're gonna be trying to do this in an air fryer. Typically what you would do is you, uh, cut up um, a potato, you, I mean, this, this is a uh, satsumaimo, a uh, Japanese sweet potato, purple on the outside, white on the inside, has a little bit of a nutty flavor, not quite as sweet as your, um, what we normally think of as a sweet potato, otherwise known as a yam, which is less purple on the outside, but orange on the inside, and actually rather sweet. Um, and you can use really either of these, but uh, obviously in Japan, you'd normally use the satsumaimo, um, and you can, you can find these, they're not too hard to find, uh, but yeah, you can find them in Asian markets, uh, you know, even in, in Rochester, also Wegmans, some Wegmans have them. Usually you would cut up potato, uh, you fry it twice, actually, um, once at a lower temperature to cook the potato through, and then second time to, um, to uh, cook the outside a little bit. More and so the uh, and then you toss it in a sugar syrup, which uh, hardens a little bit. So in, in the end, you end up with something that's uh, kind of uh, crispy and then um, fluffy on the inside, is usually what you describe it as. Um, and potatoes by themselves, sweet potatoes and uh, satsumaimo are are fairly healthy. They're not quite as healthy if you deep fry them twice and cover them in a sugar syrup. Um, and uh, I, I also am not the biggest fan of of uh, frying stuff simply because I, I find that that using oil to fry things is just it's just uh, messy so but I also like the challenge of trying to prepare things in alternative ways uh, and so I'm gonna be trying to use this uh, air fryer and um, yeah so we're gonna we're gonna give this a shot and we'll see how it, how it comes out I haven't actually tried uh, to prepare this this way before and just for reference other ingredients that I'm going to be uh, using in this are uh, honey. Um, you could actually just use normal sugar instead of honey, um, but you obviously have to use more water. That's for the um, sugar syrup part. Uh, and then also to add some uh, more uh, umami flavor, we use, I'm adding soy sauce. Uh, and then as a, a garnish in the end, typically you uh, add some sesame seeds. Usually black sesame seeds, but I, uh, I don't have black sesame seeds right now. I have white sesame seeds, so I'll be using these. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is just to wash potatoes. We're not going to uh, peel them. Um, I'm gonna be leaving the, the skins on. Usually though, I want to probably just chop off the, the ends because they end up being a little stiff and aren't very much fun to, to eat, so we're not going to use the the ends, um, but we want to make sure that they're that they're clean first before we start cutting them up. All right, so now we're just going to uh, chop the ends off. Um, and you you can do about one inch chunks. All right, so now we're just soaking the potato chunks in uh, water for 10 minutes to help remove uh, some of the starch. And then after uh, 10 minutes, and we'll just basically lay them out on a towel for a little while to, to dry for a little bit. Now this step would also be a little bit more important if we were actually frying 
um, in oil on a pot instead of using the air fryer, um, but it's probably still a good idea to, uh, to dry them. The suggestions I've found online for cooking potatoes in this uh, sort of style in an air fryer suggested 380 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. My personal experience with this one, which is not necessarily the highest quality unit in the history of the world, uh, is that things get burned pretty quickly uh, if you're not careful. So I'm gonna go take that down a little bit and go 350 uh, at um, for 20 minutes and uh, I will take it out every five minutes or so and check and, and shake things around because uh, There's you know when you, we only have one layer in here and um, while the air fryer is uh, intended to allow air circulation uh, around everything including uh, from the the bottom um, That doesn't necessarily always happen all that effectively and so we want to make sure that we uh, basically like toss it around every every five minutes. So I'm gonna do that So we're gonna we're gonna uh, see how this goes So while I'm, while I'm waiting for the uh, air fryer back there I'm gonna start putting together the uh, sugar syrup and this is this is really pretty simple uh, the uh, recipe I'm going to try is uh, two tablespoons of honey uh, one tablespoon of water and one teaspoon of soy sauce and that would be per uh, One medium potato. So obviously if you have multiple potatoes, you'd want to multiply it. This potato was pretty big So I'm actually going to to double that uh, and so it'll be four tablespoons of honey uh, One tea th sorry two tablespoons of water two teaspoons of soy sauce um, and uh, if you wanted it to uh, make a, an even thicker syrup, you could add more sugar. Um, recipes vary fairly widely for this. Uh, traditionally, you wouldn't use honey. You would actually just use uh, sugar combined with um, uh, median but, uh, and soy sauce. But uh, the honey recipe is uh, also actually pretty popular. Um, and, and it's a little, little easier, so I'm just gonna going to try that. Of course, the flavor is a little bit different, um, but I think it should work pretty well. All right, we got our first five minutes, and they uh, look pretty much the same as before. Teaspoons of soy sauce. And then, of course, two tablespoons of water. That was maybe a little bit more than I wanted. But, okay, it's fine. It's all good. I'm not a professional. So hopefully this is enough to fully coat all the the potato chunks, that's really the most important part. Uh, I'm just going to heat it on low briefly uh, just to get it mixed um, and then we'll, we'll obviously heat it uh, more later once we add the potato. All right, so we're at uh, 10 minutes. Let's uh, take the potatoes out and uh, shuffle them around again. Well, we got some browning um, and some bubbling, so uh, maybe I want to take the temperature down actually a little bit. Uh, they're still uh, they're still soft though, so that's good. That's good. Um, you you could probably also coat them in uh, a little bit of oil. Um, that's something that's pretty common when air frying if you're, say, making uh, yeah, actual potato french fries. So I set this down to 320 degrees before, just to try to make sure we don't burn uh, the chunks before uh, cooking them. I think that the sort of starting low at a low temperature and then going to a higher temperature, similar to 
uh, if you were actually using uh, just frying in a, in a pan. Um, could also work for the air fryer, um, but that's something I'll have to try at a future date. Anyway, we've got five minutes left, so I'm going to take this out again and uh, see how it's going. So there, there are some chunks that have some um, browning, but they don't actually appear to be uh, burning, which is good. So um, I'm just going to keep going um, with this. Of course, the, the point is that we want the uh, inside, to, inside to be soft while actually having the outside be crispy. Um, so I, I might actually just go and turn it up uh, for a couple minutes after the uh, five minutes are done at this current temperature. All right, a little bit more browning. I uh, probably wouldn't go uh, higher than that, but uh, hopefully these are uh, still fine. I think the it's uh, probably just a little burning on the on the outside. In this particular air fryer, I, I probably should have stuck with 350 degrees for the last five minutes, um, but of course, uh, this one may not be representative of your own experiences, and you may need to, um, of course, start a little conservatively and uh, don't just, you know, end up accidentally burning everything from the start. Uh, but uh, for now, I think I'm going to go ahead and try to add these to our uh, saucepan and then um, we'll uh, start heating them. And uh, yeah, they're still pretty soft. So I think we just uh, had some of the, uh, you know, that, that outside did get a little bit uh, uh, crispier than perhaps desired you know, in a couple pieces, but I think it'll probably be okay. Um, so I'm going to add these to the to the saucepan, and then we'll um, start uh, heating it. All right, so we've got all the potato chunks in the pot, and um, it's on like a low medium um, and I'm, I'm basically I'm just going to try to keep um, tossing them around to try to coat them in the uh, syrup until they're evenly coated and then um, when the uh, syrup starts to boil um, it should bubble up quite a bit and I'm going to stop cooking at that point and then, then transfer them to the um, parchment paper. Stores will often use a very, very thick syrup, say, in, 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 when you buy the stuff in, uh, in supermarkets. It's not it's almost opaque level of, of thick. And uh, to, to get that, you might have to actually add even uh, coloring. I don't know what they, what they do um, for stores. I, this probably is not going to be that thick. Probably almost done. It's basically stir frying and sugar syrup. All right, I think I think this is uh, starting to caramelize a bit too much here. So I'm, I'm gonna probably I'm gonna finish all that. The last thing is just to garnish with sesame seeds. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, usually that would be black sesame seeds. I don't have black sesame seeds, so I'm using white sesame seeds. Um, yeah. We're just gonna just sprinkle uh, these on here and because these are quite sticky, I imagine that they will uh, stick. So. so I let uh, the sauce get a little bit too caramelized there at the end, so there's some, some browning. Um, and obviously you can see how, how sticky this is. Um, the taste and texture is actually still pretty, pretty good though. Uh, I, I think that uh, starting a little lower, particularly in this air fryer in terms of the temperature, um, would be good and then bumping it up a little bit um, at the very end uh, would, have, would, be, would uh, improve the uh, appearance uh, a little bit. The, uh, this is a little bit different from how the commercial rendition of this uh, typically looks. Uh, if you were to you know, go to a supermarket or uh, come across uh, uh, Taikakuimo uh, as, a, as a street food looks a, looks a little bit uh, different different from this, but you know hopefully you get the the idea um, and that this this is a recipe that you could make yourself. Um, 
And, uh, but yeah, air fryers are definitely uh, a little uh, tricky in terms of adjustment. So, um, you know, a bit, like as I mentioned, try to stay a little conservative if you're trying this out um, yourself. And of course, there are also recipes out there for uh, the oil-based frying version um, if you want to give that a shot, but it's a, a pretty tasty way to have a sweet potato, I think. All right, today we're gonna make some fried rice and I'm gonna show you how simple and easy it is to make during this video. Hope you enjoy, I hope you learn, and I hope you might be willing to give it a shot uh, once we're done here. All right, so let's get started. Turn on the, turn on my stove. You can see I have a wok here. Um, right now what I'm doing is I'm heating it up before I put in any of the ingredients that we have today. Got to make sure the wok is nice and hot before I add the oil. <clears throat> now you can do this with a regular skillet um, or a regular fry pan. I feel that it's just not as fun because then you can't do the wok tossing. Uh, it's also slightly more difficult because I mean, uh, you, it's a more shallow pan. Um, so you have to be careful with the ingredients, any of your food coming out or same with the oil. So now we're just gonna add some, gonna add some oil now that it's uh, up to temperature, so to speak. Kind of eyeballing this because um, fried rice is a stir fry, so it's more or less uh, kind of toss a bunch of ingredients in there and start cooking. Well, that's what I'm gonna do today. Now I'm getting the oil moving around my wok, making sure it coats as much of the bottom and sides as I can get. Mostly the bottom. I don't want it to get stuck or anything. Alright, now we just uh, give it a few moments here to heat up more before I add the first ingredient, which will be garlic. I like garlic. You don't have to have garlic, but it definitely adds flavor to the fried rice. Okay, I think that's about ready. So now we add it. Ah, hear that sizzle. What you want to do is, uh, as you're adding the ingredients, you only want to cook it for a little bit before you add the next ingredient. And in this case, for the garlic, you want to cook it until you can start really smelling it and hearing it sizzle for about 30 seconds or so, depending on the heat of your stove. <clears throat> and you definitely want to make sure you have this at a high heat when you're cooking, because this is a fast dish to make. Um, Alright, almost there. Okay, we're almost there. A few more seconds, and then I'll add the next ingredient, which in this case will be some mixed vegetables. Okay, just about done. I think it's good to go. I'll add the vegetables in here. Oh man, you definitely hear the sizzling. And uh, at this point, you also want to be careful. You want to be careful you don't get hit by the oil splattering from your pan or your wok, um, that can definitely lead to injury. You're not careful, but it's also how you know it's cooking. So there you go. At this point, as I said, uh, I'm gonna cook it for about 30 seconds or so with each ingredient before you add in the next one. And I am still, notice that I am still moving all, oops, all the ingredients around. Apologies for that. Uh, this keeps it from sticking to the bottom of the wok.
<coughs> There's a lock toss there for you guys. Alright, a few more moments and then I'll add the next ingredient which will be the rice. This is leftover rice. It's been sitting for about a day. <clears throat> Best kind of rice because it's not at, because it's slightly dried out and the less moisture in it means the better it'll cook, the quicker it'll cook in the, when you're making the fried rice here. Should be good enough and we'll just start adding the rice. Depending on how much rice you add, this can take anywhere from about an extra 30 seconds to a minute you want to keep it cooking for before you add in the next parts. And usually these next parts you either add in um, sesame oil for flavoring <coughs> and also help lubricate the, your wok or your pan a little bit more, which you may have already burned out the, uh, the original vegetable oil. Or you can skip that part and you can just add soy sauce. Because um, I know not everybody is a fan of sesame oil or they could potentially be allergic to it. So, your choice. Time to add sesame oil. As I said, this is more for flavoring. And also to kind of make up for some of the oil that's been burned off. You want to definitely keep this moving so you don't have it stuck to the bottom of your pan. You gotta be careful of that. <clears throat> Alrighty, at this point, I think it's, uh, add the soy sauce. We'll just give it a generous amount here. Yeah, I hope you guys try this once I'm done, and once our stream is done actually. It's really starting to smell good. And it's definitely uh, an easy, simple dish to make. It's actually kind of a precursor to making omelet rice or omelet rice. I want to give that a shot. That takes a bit more skill than I have, though. Well, maybe someday. Alrighty. Now we add the eggs.
Alrighty. Eggs have been added. You can pre-mix these if you want, pre-beat them. I don't, uh, I don't do that. Mostly to save on cleanup at the end. I prefer mixing it right. I prefer mixing it right in my wok for that reason. Okay, getting all mixed together here. Almost done. Notice how it's starting to clump together, and that's because of the eggs. But don't worry. That's normal, and as long as you you keep cooking and it's still at this fairly high heat, and keep moving it around, it'll slowly break back up to individual grains like it's supposed to. It's starting to get there, see? think another 30 seconds or so and we can call this done and like I said this is really really fast it's a quick simple dish you can use it as a main dish if you really want or a side dish lunch snack yeah alrighty and I think this will do it Get this on a plate. Oh wait! At this point, forgot to add the, uh, the scallions. We need that. This is the final garnish. Do this part and then you're done. There we go. Final toss. There we are. Let's get this plated and uh, serve it up. Really still here, it's sizzling. quickly made fried rice. Just took, I want to say, looking at the time, about 10-15 minutes or so and it's definitely, as I said, a really quick and easy dish to make. You only have a couple ingredients, very simple. You got the rice, the vegetables, garlic, scallions, and then you've got the soy sauce and vegetable oil and sesame oil. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you uh, Enjoy the rest of our stream today, and once everything is done and over with, and you feel yourself getting hungry, give this a shot, because this is like a really simple, easy meal to make, really cheap, and uh, yeah, once you do, um, give a shout out on our social media and show off what you made, alright? Thanks, and uh, enjoy!
this is Jesse. I'll be showing you how to make taiyaki. Taiyaki is a dessert type snack that is often sold by street vendors in Japan. It is a pastry product that has a taste and texture similar to a waffle. Traditional taiyaki are fish shaped and have a filling of sweet bean paste or an. However, there are lots of variations to be found. Taiyaki can sometimes come in other shapes. For example, the Ueno Zoo in Tokyo sells taiyaki that are shaped like pandas. There are many other kinds of fillings you can get as well, such as creamy custard, chocolate, or even savory fillings like yakisoba. You may also come across taiyaki that has seasonings or flavors mixed into the dough. There is also shiroi taiyaki, which has a pale color and chewier texture due to using primarily rice or tapioca flour. By the way, the footage used for this video was actually recorded in 2014, but I never did anything with it until now. Here are the ingredients you will need. Flour, water, salt, sugar, baking soda, and a filling of your choice. In addition to these ingredients, you will also need cooking spray, a mixing bowl, and a taiyaki mold. You can find taiyaki molds online, and they typically cost between $15 to $25. To make taiyaki, you're going to start with mixing all of your ingredients into one bowl. You will need two cups of flour. You can see I was using whole wheat flour for this video, but most recipes call for regular all-purpose flour. The recipe I was using called for just one cup of water, but you'll see I ended up adding in a second cup once I started mixing because the dough was too dry. This may be partly a flaw of the recipe, but it may also be due to the fact that I was using whole wheat flour. I recommend starting with one cup and then adding more as needed when you mix. You'll also need one teaspoon of salt and two tablespoons of sugar. I only used one tablespoon in the video because I was using Truvia, which is a sugar substitute and requires less than regular sugar. If you're using regular sugar though, add two tablespoons. Add the half teaspoon of baking soda in last. Then you mix and mix. Your batter at the end should be similar to pancake or waffle mix. While you are mixing, you can start to heat up your mold, which I clearly forgot to do myself. I used my electric stove to heat up my taiyaki mold, but it works similarly with gas stove tops as well. Although your taiyaki mold might be nonstick, I recommend spraying it with cooking spray or spread some butter in it to make sure your finished taiyaki come out easily. My first taiyaki actually was ripped apart when I opened the mold because it stuck to the sides, so I was more careful afterwards. Pour your batter in and spread it out. If you have a mold that opens flat, you can put batter in on both sides and let it cook for a bit before adding your filling and closing it. But you can see that my mold does not open all the way. So after adding a bit of batter, I plop my filling in and then covered it with a bit more batter before closing the mold. Let the taiyaki cook for about 3 minutes, flipping it over every 30 seconds or so. When it is fully cooked, you should be able to open the mold and pick out your taiyaki easily. It took a couple of attempts, but by my third try, my taiyaki were starting to look pretty good. I ended up trying out several different fillings throughout this baking session. I primarily used Nutella, and it was pretty darn good. I also made a few with the traditional An filling, which you can probably find at Asian food markets if there are any in your area. I also tried chocolate almond paste, which also worked very well. As an experiment, I also tried putting a large pink marshmallow into a taiyaki. It made a mess because some of the marshmallow melted out of the sides and started dripping all over. But, uh, I suppose overall it was successful. <laughs> well, I guess that's it. I hope you have fun making your own taiyaki at home. Thanks for watching.